Hello, everybody, and welcome to your Artemis ADC guide. We're going to be starting off, of course, with the standard hunter build right now. Uh, pretty much everybody on every hunter. Um, is now running this where you get that leather cow and then you get your tier one going into the early icky ball icky ball uh just an unstoppable uh boxing item between the hunters basically the first hunter to finish up that icky ball gets a massive power spike in the lane and then you cannot box them uh so you've got to be on the icky ball hype train as early as possible now the good news for Artemis is that she is currently better in the meta than she's been in a long time. Um, I would say that at the absolute upper echelons of gameplay, uh, she's actually quite good, uh, particularly in the hands of things like pro players. Um, and then she gets progressively less good as you go farther down the chain. Um, I have seen her success in ranked be pretty schmeh and her success in casuals almost being non-existent. Uh, so she definitely is higher on that uh, skill list right now where probably the higher elo gameplay you're in, the better chance you have of actually watching the Artemis do well. And that's mostly because she just gets so, so strong as the game goes on. Uh, if you get into any mid game, late game, and of course, if you get a first blood like this, you can snowball really, really hard out of control. I got your back, brother. So in Artemis, we're going to be starting with our three. Also, the ability we're going to max out first. It's our lane clear. It's our god poke. Kind of everything just going to be a little rain of arrows that's going to do some damage and slow our opponent. And then at level two, we're going to make sure to get our root. Our root, if we get level two early, can lead to some early kills as we got there on Athena. You throw out that root, and after just a moment, it comes out into the world, and then it will root for two seconds. Reminder that roots in smite are not affected by diminishing returns. They will apply diminishing returns, but they are not affected by them, meaning that that root will always be a full two seconds, regardless of how much CC that somebody has recently um, taken. You'll always get that full two seconds. Pretty aggressive there for my Shang Ten, not gonna lie. At level four, we're gonna get our two. Uh, there was a more recent change to this ability um, than than less recent, and that is that your Artemis two does cleanse slows, um, which was a big help for her. So instead of Artemis 2 just giving you that movement speed and that attack speed, it does also give you that quick cleanse for just a moment. Um, so you can utilize it in that manner to get some slows off of you. Uh, instead of just having to use Tusky for the CC immunity, you've also got a little CC immunity built missing. in with your 2 nowadays. Reminder that Artemis' passive is not crit anymore either. She does extra damage to gods that are afflicted by crowd control. So this means whether they're in your root, whether your Tusky is smacking them in the head, whether a friendly is CCing them, whatever, you are going to get that bonus damage. She does not have that passive crit like she had way back in the day. For your level order on Artemis, you are going to go typically 4, 3, 2, 1. So we grab that point in our root second, but we are going to max it out last. You typically level up your ultimate whenever you can. Increased damage and CC duration. Most importantly, there on Tusky. And then after that, you level up your three because your three is going to give you extra damage. 
uh, for the lane clear. Then you're two for a couple of reasons. It gives you extra movement. It gives you extra attack speed, but it also, uh, excuse me, it gives you extra attack speed and extra duration, but it also uh, decreases the cooldown. And then finally, your root, the root will increase the damage or reduce the cooldown. But honestly, for the most part, you're either placing down the root preemptively at a couple of key locations to have like a little runoff spot, or you're just using it as a follow-up after Tusky where they're already standing still. Um, so you don't need the CDR super low on this ability. Now I've grabbed myself a couple of wards so I can get out some deep wards. These are the two ward locations right now that I'm mostly digging this on hunters. Right up here and right up here by the purple buff. So you can see this actually is going to cleanse off this whole area if you don't place the wards that deep if you place them a little bit farther back you actually can still get ganks from some other locations so i do recommend going and getting those deep wards out they are a lot more efficient I'm gonna try to throw out a little root here over onto the apollo now you can see how much damage that i am doing right now that is because i have finished my icky ball and started the snowball over in the duo lane once the icky ball is online this item gives you 35 base physical power plus an additional 45 when you have it stacked up meaning that this is actually an 80 power item that also gives you 30 percent attack speed that also reduces your opponent's attack speed which is why you see hunters picking it up asap because it is just stupidly efficient so if you also have a um stim in your kit uh some bonus attack speed it's going to be that much more efficient because you can make sure that the passive is always up and running and yes it does proc onto uh minions and stuff like that so you can have it built up before you even have to go hit an enemy god it's not like it only procs an enemy god you can see it built up uh down here on my passive bar For our standard combo here on Artemis, it's going to be pretty straightforward. We're oftentimes going to be using our three in order to close the gap between us and the opponent. After we use our three, if we're going to continue the fight, we're standardly going to follow up with a Tusky. We're going to land one auto attack after Tusky and then go for the root. And then we're going to do as much damage as we can while they are inside that root. So once again, that standard combination would be you would throw down the three then you would pop your tusky auto after tusky goes you're gonna want to get that root out throw it right down on top of them and then you grab yourself the kill just like that that's gonna be your standard artemis combo Your Artemis 3 isn't quite big enough, by the way, to hit the entire wave. So it can be a little bit helpful uh, to auto attack the wave just a couple of times. That way they're all fully grouped within your circle and it'll help out your Artemis uh, lane clear a lot. If you can just hit, usually two or three autos is enough to make all of those creeps within the Artemis circle. Now I've got 2200 gold, so I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna get myself the Atalanta's bow. Once again, bunch of power, bunch of attack speed, bunch of penetration. I'm actually gonna get ganked by a Ratatasker while I'm in my inventory screen. What the? But sir, I can't see anything. I've got an inventory. We're talking about Atalanta's bow. This is gonna give you a bunch of power, attack speed, a little bit of physical pen, which is gonna be relevant um, as we get later on into the game. You don't actually buy it for the fizz pen right now. You just get it for the fact that it's cheap raw stats and also the passive is very good it's gonna give you that partial <laughs> hastened fatalis effect which helps you a lot so for those that don't know kind of the build right now that is going around for hunters it is basically an entire bow build and yes, this can include the Silver Branch Bow if you're a god with an attack speed stim. So Artemis has 80% attack speed stim. She is a fantastic user of Silver Branch Bow. It is also going to give you an additional 10% physical pen. 
and Obo is also really strong right now because you're getting all this um, power from these attack speed items. So you're going to get nice, thick Obo procs combined with that silver branch. And you don't even have to really think about the build that much because you're basically sitting over here and just getting the whole bow tree. Now, crit is still good. You'll still see people building Wind Demon Deathbringer, and that's because it's still a good build. It still does a lot of damage. Um, the difference right now is mostly that there's not really a way to counter the um, all bow build, but there is ways to counter crit with like spectral and stuff. And so you do have to be a little bit more careful um, with going the crit. Whereas you can basically go the all bow build without even having to think about it. For your second active on Artemis, you actually have two choices. Generically, I'm going to recommend the Aegis, and so I'm going to build it this game. Because that's one that you're going to be getting most of the time. But if you're really ahead like we are this game, you can also get a blink. The blink tusky initiation strategy is really, really good, um, even at high level gameplay. And it's just, just going to come down to if you're winning early and how much initiation your team has. Now, my team has a lot of initiation this game. We've got a tier and a Jing 10 with an Awelix potential pull follow up. So I don't actually need to help out with the initiation at all. But sometimes you'll be on a team that its initiation is pretty bad and it can help out a lot. Gotta quickly slay this tower so he can just kill the Apollo for free back there. A quick thing we should know as well. The um, buff bug is still in the game. So right there you could see you can see I walked over a purple buff, but I did not actually get the purple buff. And that is because I had the enhanced and I went to pick up a regular purple buff. And if you have an enhanced buff right now and you walk over a regular, it will not redo your buff at all. Uh, just a current bug in Smite because they made it all part of one buff instead of two separate buffs like it used to be so you have to have an enhanced pickup and enhanced to actually refresh any part of the buff for our gods that we like to pair with artemis we basically have two separate strategies we have um, one embracing the fact that you're going to lose the early game and just going uh, for the straight late game. So you could pair her with a Geb or Kepri and just say, hey, she's a team fight late game powerhouse. Let's just kind of sit back in the lane, not go too aggressive. We'll just chill out. Right, or you can say, hey, Artemis is already going to be so good late game. Let's just decide to power through the early game and give her somebody better to pair with to help her with the early game clear and fight potential. Something with a lot of CC typically pairs well with Artemis. A Ymir, um, something that gets people slowed or stunned or knocked up or whatever. Shing Ten can be good because he's got that knock up into the root because that allows her to pair her own root really easily. And if they don't have a beads up, if you do like a Ymir freeze into a uh, Artemis root, that's over three seconds of CC already at level two because reminder that root does not get affected by DR, which means you get that full CC duration no matter what. Although if you were to do it the other way around, Artemis root and Ymir freeze, Ymir freeze would have that DR on it. So always preferable to do the root last if you can. Grabbed ourselves that oboe. Now I'm gonna start working into the silver branch bow. Gonna bring me up to that 20% penetration, which is about the time that I'm gonna start needing it as we're getting into these team fights and the rotations. Now you'll also see that we don't really have any life seal in this build. Most hunters are just utilizing this leather cow into a hunter cow late game for the life seal. If you feel like that's impossible, you can grab a Aussie in order to help out. But for the most part, it's just the one life steal item. If you're gonna go the route of Aussie, that typically pairs better with crit because you get those big thick crits on the bonus Aussie proc damage, you're low HP, you get a crit, you can regen a lot of HP through life steal that way. So if you're not gonna go the crit, I would probably steer clear of the Aussie. 
So the guys that we don't want to go against on Artemis, there's really just one thing that it comes down to, and that's walls, walls, walls. Um, we can immunity frame slows. We've got built-in CC immunity with Tusky. So CC isn't that big of a deal for us. The big thing is just going to be people that make walls that stop us from getting away. So we're talking Ymirs. We're talking Kabrakens. We're talking Yamojas. Anybody like that is very problematic for Artemis because of the bonus movement speed and the ability to take off slows from her on her too. She's actually quite squirrely as long as she has a little bit of room to run preferably you would be um not early picking Attack artemis you'd be picking her a little bit later in the p's and b's now one little trick on artemis that you can do to kind of help yourself out after this team fight, it looks like they might try to steal. Nope. If you're getting ganked a whole lot, if you are getting uh, rotated on, you might need to set up like a little escape area. So sometimes in Artemis, what I like to do is like throw out two different traps here and here. And that way you block off an entire path in the jungle. This is going to, one, stop you from getting ganked too fast through this area, but two, it is also going to give you a little escape path where if you start to get ganked, you can pop your two, run through this area, and then they have to preemptively pop a bead or use a movement ability or something to get over that because you can have up to three traps out at the same time, which means you can utilize two of them in order to block a path and still have a third trap up for your actual fighting. And assuming you're hitting that third trap, those two other ones will always stay over there. So that, now that we're nearing full build on Artemis, this is where we start to become uh, really, uh, really scary, especially once we back up and get that silver branch. Reminder that silver branch gives you uh, two power per stack. Um, so when you see 30 stacks on the silver branch bow, that's actually giving you 60 power plus the actual power that the item already gives you. Which means that it is not unreasonable uh, for a silver branch to be giving you near or 100 power plus when you have uh, your attack speed stem pot. So I'm gonna back up, grab that Silver Branch bow. I'm also gonna start working myself into uh, a Titan's Bane, although I don't wanna spend too much money on it right now because I wanna finish the Hunter's Cow. But with the Silver Branch bow, when I pop my two right now, I've got 47 stacks. That's nearly 100 power just from those stacks itself, plus the 30 power I actually get from Silver Branch bow, meaning that this is currently a 130 power item. Now I want to finish that level 20, go grab my Hunter's Cow, and then I want to back it up. For my final item, I'm going to be getting that Titan's Bane. Titan's Bane just gives us that last 20% penetration. So we've got the full 40% pen on all of our autos all the time. We don't have to utilize an Executioner in order to hit somebody three times in order to reduce their power. Nothing like that. We just get it right off the bat. Plus, we've got that 40% power for against objectives as well, which means that this build absolutely shrekles phoenixes and all of that a little bit less efficient against the gold fury fire giant than a crit build obviously crit is going to burn through those objectives but way more efficient against the towers and the phoenixes i've rotated over to the team fights now that i've got that hunter's cow finish gonna make sure we get rid of that scorpion so we can start to do the fire giant and look over into the solo lane where we can just start grabbing ourselves some tier twos. Gonna throw down a little root here just behind me. That way if somebody comes from right behind me, they might get themselves in a squirrely situation. Also giving myself an escape route. Always be trying to give yourself an escape route on Artemis. 
Your left tower this thing is, under is I always try to keep out Your middle tower is under a little trap behind me just in case. Now Apollo is over left lane still. He is going to be split pushing. They do have some people here, so we are going to have to turn and fight this. Going to be just diving into them as fast as I can. Looks like my team is kind of getting zoned out in the back line, so I'm going to kind of have to walk away for now. I can stick around and just come back into this fight because I do have some life steal. Ooh, actually, I got to be careful now. There was a Scylla over that wall, and so they are going to be able to put us down. Unfortunately, a lot of our team doesn't seem to be here. We didn't front line very well right there. Uh, with the type of lead that we have, we should just be absolutely W-king at them. Uh, there's no reason to be afraid of anybody on their team. We should have our Tier and our Xing Tian uh, all up in their business all the time. Just making some room, uh, mostly for me right now because I'm level 20. In order to go in on them. So because the first fire didn't go successful, we're going to have to head over to the left lane, re-grab our purple buff, take a gander at the gold fury as well, and then maybe head back over to the fire a little bit later. Not utilizing our lead very well right now. Also need to do a better job of getting sentry wars out on the map. Our ward coverage is also pretty lackluster. Head on over to the gold, to see the if we theory. can grab that really quick. I'm not actually sure if it's even up or not. It is up. I'm gonna throw down that sentry ward. They don't know that we're here. Should be able to burn that gold fury pretty fast. You can see even without the crit, we are still racking the Oni fury. Now this Scylla is actually W King pretty hard at us. Unfortunately, a Wheelix was not ready. She can grab Scylla out of that dash with her ultimate uh doesn't look like she was ready she was kind of right in the middle of her one animation unfortunately now we do need to get set up around the fire giant again this time we have the oni creeps pushing out buying us a little bit of time attack so i'm once again going to call for the attack fire giant get some people over here we'll be able to burn it down quite quickly and if the enemy team shows up, we should be able to go right in for the fight, throw down a Tusky, and just immediately start grabbing us some kills. Now they've got a bunch of people at 1 HP. We're way less afraid to fight this time. This is exactly how that first fight should have gone. And now we go back to the fire giant. We don't want to get too greedy. I can even start tanking this. You want to make sure you come back and start to do the objective. Realistically, it would be nice for like the Jing Tan or somebody to be tanking that right now. There was also a Morgana around the back that we're gonna have to deal with. So we're gonna have to switch off a of Fire Giant yet again. There was an Apollo in the air. We gotta be a little bit concerned about. I don't know if he had enough mana to still be in the air. That's a great ultimate from our Jing Tan. And we'll be able to pick up the Morgana, but unfortunately not be able to get the Fire Giant it looks like yet again. Gonna have to be a little bit careful because now they have all respawned and they're gonna be coming back. I was just born with super. Grab ourselves another sentry ward. I'm gonna head quickly over um, right back to the fire giant because we've got 40 seconds uh, on that death Attack timer. So we want to make sure that we are utilizing that the strongest god on their team is currently dead. Your right tower is under attack. I'm gonna get out a deep reward back here. Gonna poke out a Scylla. She has to run away. Get out a nice deep ward. Hopefully somebody has a ward for in the back on the actual fire. We get it started right back up. Keep putting out some aggressive roots. So if they wanna try to get in here, they've gotta go through all of that. And this time it looks like we are gonna be able to just go ahead and go for the burst on it. 
they don't have their Morgana there to contest, and now we can go immediately into the mid lane shove. In these late game team fights in Artemis, I'm obviously going to be responsible for the objective damage. So my very first priority is going to be attacking towers, attacking phoenixes, gold fury, fire, giant, whatever. Not necessarily going for the PvP unless I have to. Now it is going to be quite hard uh, for us to actually shove into these phoenixes because they do have some good range to clear with that Scylla. And the Morgana, so we might have to just kind of chill around, get multiple lanes actually pushed up right now. Good time for it to kind of go back up. I'm going to go check out and see if the Draugr is up. I didn't actually pay attention over by the Phoenixes to see if they had it. They did. Sometimes getting that Draugr can be nice just to prevent the enemy team from getting it and utilizing it um, to help out with their Phoenix defense. It does make those Phoenixes a little bit harder to actually push into. Mother Earth is looking down on you right now. Time to back up, get our active set. I'm going to grab a red pot just for a little bit of extra damage. And then it's time it's for us to go lane. shove out that left lane farthest away from the fire giant, of course, is always the one that you would like to shove first. That way, if the fire does happen to respawn and you get a phoenix out and you've got a lot of pressure, they've got to go deal with. Although they do have an Apollo this game, who is actually quite good um, my at dealing with that far lane phoenix being down. Gonna position myself aggressive over here into the jungle, get out a sentry ward. Presumably they have that warded as well. They do. And it looks like they might try to go crazy aggressive right here. They're gonna try to get a pick off on me, but they're gonna take a lot of damage and they're gonna use a lot of abilities for it. And this is not gonna be worth for them at all. In fact, we might just win the game off of this. It's gonna call for the attack. We got two dead. We're about to have a third one dead and we should be able to shove it right on down into the titan room and put this one away Your team is so right there i see that they're all coming for me so i throw down a quick little root on top of my body that way i can run back through it i throw down my ultimate tusky starts to do work get out a bunch of damage and i basically just start running away using my cc immunities using all of my ccs that i have in artemis's kit and to get myself the heck out of dodge guys one more thing for that last item slot it is going to be situational you've got titan's bane and you've got kin size both are good in that last slot it's just going to depend on who you're playing against if the enemy is building more hp you're going to want to lean into kins if the enemy is building more defenses you're going to want to lean into titan's bane and also keep in mind that titan's bane is going to be better against the towers and objectives uh, than the kin size is as well and that is our artemis a dc guy thank you for supporting the twitchiest community if you'd like to see more videos make sure you subscribe to the channel and always hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos thank you for all your support and have a twitching day y'all